What are you looking at? sword forever. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, uh, if you haven't had a chance to yet along the center aisle here, there should be a black book. If you wouldn't mind signing it, pass it back and forth. We always like to know who's been with us on Sunday morning. Um, you may have noticed it looks like we're going to have a baptism or something over here with all the people sitting in the front rows. Either that or we're suddenly a Baptist church and now everybody's got to sit up front. But uh, you guys, haven't you ever been to a Lutheran church before? There are plenty of good seats in the back. I mean... <laughs> You might become a sermon illustration, you don't watch your step, but uh, in an effort to make my numbers look really good, apparently uh, uh, Christy and, 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 and some of my friends got together and, anyway, so there's this, sitting behind the kids are another group of kids that, uh, uh, anyway, thanks for coming, thanks for all of you for coming. I really don't have anything for announcements, except welcome to Bishop uh, D. always a pleasure. Um, oh, look at that. A round of applause. It, it, genuflection, I think, is what's next. Uh, 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 can they kiss your ring? I mean, some, we'll, we'll call you Pope D or something. Uh, but, uh, uh, and we will be welcoming new members. So, uh, uh, yay. Um, anyway, that's all I got. Anybody got anything else? Sue, our new president? Well, I guess we got food later on. So if you want to come down for food that way. Yeah, that way. So hang it right when you get out and keep walking until you find food and then, you know, stop there. Hang around for a while. So, all right, if that's all we got, I invite you to stand. Let's start our worship. to play though. I really appreciate that. That's uh... And by the way, you may have noticed, if you find any of the 50 pairs of glasses I have strewn across the church here after I'm gone, eh, yeah. point in my direction. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Uh, trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. We'll just have a moment of silence for, I don't know, reflection. Take a deep breath. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Yes, now. <laughs>
I will miss your singing. I don't know if you remember, I think it was one of the early Sundays when I was here in Ruth. I remember you grabbed a bulletin from the week before and were fully prepared for the music was there. And, 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 and the, the, after that, I made sure that Bobby threw away every copy of the previous bulletin so this wouldn't happen. And it came to the Curie, and like I'm waiting for a note, and I can see that Ruth has no idea what's going on. So I said, oh, let's do it a cappella. So I picked some note that seemed right, and it was about a third lower than it should have been which was about right for us, you know, on a Sunday morning. And you guys knocked it out of the park, and I went, why don't we just do it a cappella from now on? You guys are such good singers. So thank you for that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, with endless mercy, you receive the prayers of all who call upon you. By your spirit, show us the things we ought to do and give us the grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now it's the kids. Yay!
Yeah, read, read the bulletin. It's in there, man. I'm not making this up. Come on, just plop, uh, plop down. I, I just want to talk to you for a little bit. It's kind of fun looking at you through this, you know, so. Some of you were up front last Sunday, weren't you? Hi, you came back. That's good. I feel like I'm, this is really weird. I'm going to reposition here. I'm just kind of. All right, so thanks for the music. I always look forward, if, if you guys are playing or singing or whatever, it's just a better Sunday, okay? I want you to know that this place is better because you guys are here, honest. You know, if I ever need a smile, I mean, I look at the, the, the grown-up people here and I don't know how they're gonna look at me, so I'm just like, <laughs> you know. And, but you guys always smile at me. Of course, you know, a couple of you, I could swear you were, hi, oh, oh, Tova, Tova, where are you going? <laughs> Tova, come on up, come on up, I, I missed my hug. Tova, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, come here. This is my, this is my wiggle girl, Tova. She, uh, come on, sit down, sit down, it's okay. Um, every Sunday when we get here, Tova's gotta come up and give me a hug sometime you know, I remember one time I didn't catch you before the church service, Tova. Um, and so she came up for communion. And so I came up and, and hugged her and I said, oh, Jesus loves you and so do I, Tova. And then she turns to walk away. There's something, do you guys notice what I do with the kids whenever they come up if they're not taking communion? I always put a cross on their forehead like we do when they were baptized, right? You guys remember that? Okay. Um, and I tell them that... Uh, Jesus loves them and is always going to love them no matter what. It's kind of this, you know, and they just, and, and, and Tova came up and gave me a hug and I said, oh, Jesus loves you and so do I. And she turned to walk away and then she turned right back and she went, <laughs> pointed to her forehead. So I had to do the thing too. So it was just great, but it's good to see you, Tova. Christy noticed that you weren't here this morning. So, all right. But you guys just make this place better. Honest. I remember when I first got here, how many of you were here a year ago? Do you remember? Because I think most of you weren't yet, okay? I think we had like six kids in Sunday school. And now look at you, and not everybody's here, right? So thank you guys. You make this so much better. It is a better place with you. A church without young people like you is just kind of scary, you know? Um, so thank you for being a part of this church. And I want you to know that like, Okay, you know it's my last Sunday, right? Right? Well, I hope you can be happy for me. Do you know what it means to retire? Okay. Since I was, how many, like, how, how old are you, Jada? 12? I started working before I was your age. Okay? And I just always kind of either a paper route or something, you know? I think it was 15 years old. Remember the happy chef? Guys, okay. You could go up, you know, if you were eight, out too late, for instance, some night, and they actually had a button you could push and it would say stupid things. They, they took that down for obvious reasons. But I started washing dishes there when I was 15 years old. So, I mean, like, I've always worked. I've always had to go to work. And I've really loved it. I've been a pastor for 30 years, and I've really loved it. It's been great. They hand me a microphone, and they just let me talk. Isn't that great? I get paid to talk. I like to talk. Have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to nod that hard, but uh, yes. I need to get some boots. I think you're okay for now. I think it's great that you're wearing. You want me to take off my shoes so you feel more at home? Okay. There. Is that better? Okay. I want you to make sure you feel okay. But anyway, right, what's going to happen now is I don't need to go to work anymore. I know. Yay. No, it, it, it makes me very happy. Because oh, it's like it's summer vacation. Yeah, I'm starting one and I don't, don't I need to go back to school in the fall. Isn't that great? So it, it's great. It's really a good thing for me. I hope you can be happy for me. Um, but it's also sad, you know, because we got to say goodbye. It's hard to say goodbye, isn't it? Especially when you like somebody. I don't know. I, I guess, I don't know. I assume you guys like me. You look at me like you like me. Well, except for you. <laughs> la, la, last, uh, what was it? For the baptism, I, I forgot to invite the kids. We had the six baptisms last Sunday. Uh, um, <clears throat> and uh, 
I forgot to invite the kids down. And so I invited all the kids to come down. And this little stinker right here in the green shirt. Yeah, I know. See that face? And I said, well, come on down. And he went, I don't know what voice it was. Can you say it? No. I went, is that Satan? Are you possessed? <laughs> come up here. Let me sprinkle you with some holy water. Let's see what happens. Yes. Oh. Uh, my mom, so are those snowflakes? Are those what? Those are snowflakes, yes. Okay. We've established, okay. Um, but anyway, so it's just been great. Thank you. And by the way, do you know whose church this is? First of all, it's God's church. If it doesn't belong to God, it's not a church. If it belongs to God, it is a church, okay, in this case. So, but you know who else's church it is? It's your church. Yes. Yes, Roya got it right. Roya, who also looks at me sometimes with a or those brows furrowed at me, like, what are you trying to pull, Mr. Pastor? Um, no, it's your church. It's your church. Did you know that? Isn't that marvelous? And, you know, before too long, you're going to be like on church council. You're going to be up here leading the church and, and doing everything. And I think that's marvelous because I think you guys are just terrific. You make this church a better church, and I'm so glad to see you, and thank you for showing up. Keep showing up longer after I'm gone, because I mean, I'm not all that great, but you've got some great, look at these, look at these women that have helped you and the grandmas, right? I'm so sorry, Lila, I'm gonna look right at the camera. Lila, I'm sorry I didn't respond to your email. Sorry you're sick, uh, wish you could be here, because uh, 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 she, Kath, I know you've all been involved with the music, but you know Lila, you know, you know Lila, and, uh, uh, She's done, anytime they have bells and all that, it was great. So, anyway, I'm just, uh, today I just want to thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling thankful today for the year that we've had together. And I uh, want you to keep going on. Yes, Tova. Uh, I can't see my mom anymore. Oh, I'm sure she's still here. Okay, because she's going to be joining as a new member. Unless she's chickening out. <laughs> Nicole, oh, you're still there, Okay. But for your sake, Nicole, when it comes to that point, I will not make any of you come up front. You just stand where you are, okay? Um, all right, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? Uh, you can shake your head all you want, but I'm still going to be thankful, even for you. Okay, buddy, after church, out in the parking lot, meet me there, okay? <laughs> all right. So keep being cool. You guys are just terrific, and you make this church so much better, so keep showing up. These people need all the help they can get and you're the ones that's gonna help them, okay? Thank you for coming up. Do I get a high five from all of you on your way back? Get out of here. Shoo! <laughs> high five. Okay, come on, keep them. Come on, take, that, that, that. Okay, and then. Yeah, Oop. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, see the two that didn't give me a high five? Yeah. Those are the ones you gotta watch out. Ow! All right. Oh! Ah! Yeah! Oh, whoop. try again. All right. See you later. Our first reading this morning comes from Isaiah 58, starting at the first verse. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask, me, uh, ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look. You serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to blow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, 
to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? It is, not, is it not to share your bread with hungry and bring the homeless poor to your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break down like dawn and your healing shall spring forth quickly. Your vindicators shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, the, call and the Lord will answer and shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you revoke the yoke among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins will be rebuilt and you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. The word of God, word of life. Well, we read responsibly Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy are those who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. For them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They have given freely to the poor and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their heads with honor. The second reading comes from 1 Corinthians 2, starting with verse 1. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts and bestowed on us by God. Word of God, the Word of Life. The Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. 
A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass away from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Thank you so much for the honor of being here with you today. I bring you greetings from the Synod staff of the Southwestern Minnesota Synod, our other 228 congregations, presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, the 8,700 plus congregations in the ELCA and 3 million members, from our partners in the Lutheran World Federation, 77 million Christians in the Lutheran tradition around the world. And most recently, I bring you greetings from our friends in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land. I had the privilege of being part of a spiritual journey and a journey of accompaniment with other newer bishops for the last two weeks. It was an honor to be there. We were there for the ordination of the first female pastor as a Lutheran pastor in the Middle East, Pastor Sally Azar. And so I returned here, my body returned to St. Cloud late on Monday. Uh, my brain followed by Thursday after 30 hours of sleep deprivation and a powerful head cold. One bag uh, came to me on Friday and the last suitcase arrived yesterday. So I am thrilled to be here. Thank you for your patience as I um, deal with still recovering in so many ways. But when Pastor Darby asked if I would be able to be here for this Sunday, I was absolutely in. And it is so good to be back here with you again because we're thinking about what it means to be church together. And I know that if somebody asked you to describe, eh, what does it mean to be a part of a church, you would maybe say, oh, somebody who reads the Bible, goes to worship, prays, praises God. And those certainly are some basic practices that people are a part of in the church. That's exactly what God's people would have said 2,500 years ago, too. But I love that reading from Isaiah because it talks about a time when the people of God had been dreaming about going back home after 50 years of exile. Some didn't make it to that point. Others had never known the old country, but they'd heard plenty about it. And now all of their dreams were supposed to be coming true, except their dreams weren't matching reality. The country was in shambles back then. Everybody was fighting. People weren't being taken care of. Instead of pulling together, doing something to help people, the religious people were praying and fasting just for their own renewal. There wasn't a connection between their prayers and the rest of life. And God couldn't take it any longer. You heard it in that reading. God tells Isaiah the prophet to shout out to the people, lift up your voice, and then God mocks them. God says, oh yeah, you people are going, God, we're doing all the right things, all the things you told us to do, but what's the point of praying because you don't pay attention to us? What's the point of being humble because you're not even going to notice God? You're the one not being faithful, God. But then God responds directly. Your prayers are all about you. What good does that do? And then all you do is fight with each other. You don't take care of people. 
People are going hungry and homeless and you're gossiping and pointing fingers of blame. God says, this is what I want. To be sure that all people know fairness and are treated justly. To share what you have, food and clothing and shelter with those who have nothing. To patch it up and reconcile with people, to help those who are suffering. To put aside your sense of entitlement and privilege and recognize the blessings that can be shared. To stop blaming, talking bad of others or gossiping. And God says, when this is how you are living, everything your ancestors worked for is being rebuilt. You will be called a repairer of a breach, a restorer of streets to live in. God says it's like light at the beginning of the day. It's like being a watered garden. It's like springs of water that never end. Well, fast forward 2,500 years. Can you imagine all the people who are searching for that kind of refreshment and hope today as we're emerging from a pandemic? All the places that wait for that kind of light, the families, the towns, the cities of our nation and around the world who wait for some glimmer of hope. Jesus put it this way, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so they see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. What's that about? Well, first of all, I think it says, Jesus is saying, this is what you are, salt and light, people of God, of Christ Lutheran in Slayton. Jesus isn't just talking to one individual here or about one person. The word you in this reading is plural, as in y'all. Y'all are salt. Y'all are light. And Jesus doesn't say, if you want to become salt and light, he doesn't say you need to do these things before you can become salt and light. He says, this is what you are, church. And secondly, in this reading, being salt and light makes a difference. A little bit of salt, you know, flavors the whole pot, right? A little bit of light shines in the night. A few years ago, there was a story about a blizzard when a couple from Canada was driving up I-29 from a biking trip in Arizona. They were equipped with a sleeping bag, warm clothes, and a candle. But outside of Summit, South Dakota, not far from the Minnesota border, they realized they couldn't go any farther. So they pulled off at the exit, planning to get to a rest stop. Well, you can picture what this is like, right? It's been that kind of winter here. The drifts have barricaded the ramp. So with 50 mile an hour gusts, gas going down in the van, and snow blowing in all the vents, they lit a candle and waited. For increasingly chilly hours, they waited. But then a truck driven by a guy from a trucking company in Albertville happened up the same exit wrap. He noticed a flickering light coming from one lone vehicle nearby. So he pulled on his snowmobile suit, brave to love and did I mention laughter? I don't know, laughter. To come and bring joy with Oliver and bring laughter. So you all might grow together in the joy of Jesus Christ. When we together see how God is working in the world and through you, each and every one of you, it is an incredibly beautiful thing. It is light in the night a watered garden, streams in the desert, restores of a breach, bringing restoration and healing for all those around you. You see, being salt and light isn't so much about doing something as it is just being, being what you already are, called into life with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Pride and self-centeredness drowned in the waters of baptism, nailed to the cross and crucified in Jesus Christ, and then lifted up to the light of a new day, 
to live in the light of the resurrection each and every day. You're freed from having to worry about whether or not your prayers are good enough, freed from wondering if God can hear you, freed from worrying about whether you can ever measure up to God or anybody else, freed from always thinking about yourself, freed to live fully in this world with all of its griefs and beauty, its pain and its joy. Friends in Christ, Jesus has said it. You are salt that flavors the whole kettle. You are light that shines like one little candle in the night of a winter blizzard so that together you might give glory to God. Pastor Darby, I thank you for the way you do that. Christ Lutheran, I thank you for your witness to Jesus Christ. Amen. We join um, this little light of mine. Okay, everybody sit down and pay attention. Um, Bishop D, first of all, did you listen to my sermon from last week? Because there was so much that you said that I touched on last week, I mean, as far as the, these people. I told them, I have shown you every day what an underfunctioning pastor looks like, and you're welcome for that, okay? It's like Paul saying, I came to you knowing nothing but Christ crucified. I was a stumble bum. I just, you know. Uh, and, and the one thing I wish you would have brought up um, about my ministry here is, is laughter. I mean, I'm, I'm really disappointed that you left that part out because it's like my favorite. Um, well, there may be a couple of them. Anyway, uh, without further ado, so thank you. That was marvelous. But I, I actually was hoping that that was the sermon you would give because I've been trying to tell them this stuff for a year, but it's different when the bishop comes in and says it to them, right? So thanks. Appreciate you. Okay, welcoming new members. Oh, do I have glasses? Okay, I'm old. <clears throat> okay, uh, dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people who I'm going to have stand for a little, actually you're all going to stand in a second. Uh, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. I invite you all to stand as we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which should be up on your screen. Hey, there we go. And we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, all but, except for those of you who are welcoming, please sit down. Those of you who are welcoming, please remain standing right where you are for just a bit. All right, hi, there you are, okay. I know there were some uh, who could not make it here this morning, um, so, uh, but I told them they could be members too. Um, but uh, uh, let us welcome these sisters and brothers in, in Christ to this community of faith. Oh, wait, I don't have the questions I'm supposed to ask you. Well, do you want to become members? We do. Oh, yeah, yeah, say we do. Yeah, we do? Or nod? Okay, great, great, great. Okay, you're members. All right. Um, yeah, you can sit down. The rest of y'all, uh, uh, is it okay that they're members? Okay, all right, all right, all right. So you got each other's backs and stuff, right? You're going to keep being salt and light and laugh now and then together? If so, say, we do. All right, great. Okay, that's done. Okay. Uh, yes, let us welcome these sisters and brothers in Christ to this community of faith, and we say it together. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. We give thanks to you, dear Lord, for our new members whom you have drawn to yourself by the love of Jesus Christ and whom we have welcomed into this household of faith. Keep us close together in your spirit, in the breaking of bread and the prayers, and in service to others. Amen? Amen. All right, great. I invite you to stand for the prayers. <sighs> Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and action. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice. Merciful God, inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing natural disasters. Merciful God, instruct the powerful in your ways. Provide upright leadership in business and industry that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God, Loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst. Grant peace to endless quarrels, put an end to hunger, and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes or violence in their communities. Satisfy the afflicted, satisfy the afflicted in any way. We pray, Lord, especially for those near to us who stand in need of your healing and comfort. We pray for Joyce, David, Opal, and Karen, Harvey, Kathy, and Anders, Dave, Rick, Ruth, Harris, and Harris, and all others whom we name before you in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. Help us to be light that shines in the night, that others may see our good works and give glory to you. Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God, the cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for all whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring
bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Take a moment and share this peace with those around you. Pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as your people, as people of your justice and freedom. You may magnify and adore through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. O God, most merciful, O God, most mighty, O God, our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, 
Call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought, fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor, he lived under oppression, he wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Love you guys. Oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. Oh God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. Oh God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. Oh God, you are fire. Transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic. O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, who be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. He is not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy Sorry about blowing the nose over the microphone. You'll edit that out before that goes to broadcast, right? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, come and taste the joy of God, but first sit down. A um, couple of words about communion. Um, first of all, as Christians who happen to be Lutheran, we believe, like Luther wrote in the small catechism, that holy communion is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given with the bread and the wine, and that by partaking in this sacrament, we receive Forgiveness of sin, life, and salvation for, as Luther writes, where there is forgiveness of sin, there is also life and salvation. I like the way we believe it. I think it's true to scriptures, and it kind of, I don't know, just jives with me and all that stuff. But we've also realized that not every Christian on the face of the planet believes exactly the way that we do, and we've decided that we're going to let Jesus sort this out when he comes back again in glory. In the meantime, literally everyone is welcome. There are no restrictions. We make no distinction here. By the way, thank you. I can't believe I got away with this. I've been wanting to do this pretty much all 30 years of my career, which is just stop pretending that age matters with this because it doesn't. And one of my great delights, and I got to tell you, Nathan, your kids, I remember when we first went through at Roya, you know, went through the little bit of instruction we gave, but your two younger ones, you know, didn't. But I remember the time you came up with your littlest, and I'm sorry, I'm blanking on the names here, but uh, there's just so many of them. It's wonderful. Uh, but you were carrying her up there, and she stuck her hand out, and I kind of went, it's okay with me, and you went, mm, whatever. So I gave it to her, and every Sunday now, and then, and then the middle daughter also came up, but every Sunday now, she is the most excited person in this church to get communion, and it's just so beautiful. Let the little children come. So if you're wondering if you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, I guess, I don't know, I, I always feel like I put this in here. It's for the forgiveness of sin, among other things. So if you don't have any sin, um, I, you're welcome. I just, I'm not sure what we have for you. Well, we've got Jesus. So, um, and, and so the way we're going to proceed here, and I guess if you've got some coins or some bills you want to put in the noisy offering, what does the noisy offering go for? What's that? 
Ukraine. Okay, so if you got something you want to go to our ministry in Ukraine, and we literally have quilts over there, we know that. Um, so, yeah, it's a good cause. That's where that galvanized steel bucket is there. Um, if you come up the center aisle, I'll be standing in the middle, and uh, if you hold out your hands, I'll give you a wafer of bread uh, that you can eat, uh, the body of Christ. Um, and, and actually, if you desire gluten-free, there's a little stand here with a little triangle napkin over it. I'll let you grab your own uh, so I don't get my gluteny fingers all over it, and then uh, we'll, anyway. And then uh, off to my sides will be uh, a couple of people holding a tray. The red liquid is wine. The white liquid is a, uh, a white grape juice. So uh, take your pick. And then on your way back to the side aisles, there's uh, baskets there. Uh, if you don't want to take communion for whatever reason, I invite you to come up anyway. I'll, I'll give you a blessing or say something affectionate on God's behalf to you. So, and the way I'll know what you've come from, if you stick out your hands, you get communion. If you cross your arms like that, you don't. So, all right, well, now, let's sing Lamb of God while my assistants come up here.
Whoever just blew your nose, if you'd like a microphone that you can blow your nose into, I can come out there and we can, you know, then I won't feel so alone. Um, please stand. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Please be seated, and I guess there's something called farewell to Pastor Darby Lawrence. Is that your real name? Those of you who went to lab school know that. Is that your real name? We always had student teachers, and they were doing roll call one day. And, you know, Darby, and I said, here, and they said, is that your real name? And then nobody ever let me forget that. <laughs> okay, hi. Oh, what an honor it is to be able to share in this time. Because, Pastor Darby, you were called to be a pastor in this place, to proclaim God's word, to baptize and teach, to announce God's forgiveness, and to preside at the Lord's table. With the gospel, you have comforted this congregation in times of sickness and trouble, at the death of loved ones, and in all the transitions of life coming out of a pandemic and being church together and figuring out what that means in this time. You have shared joys and sorrows, and you have been important in the life of this congregation in Jesus Christ. You have helped to make this a community where all are welcome, where all are loved, and where all know that they are precious children of God. And so you have been important in the service of this congregation in this community and in God's mission to the whole world. And so now as you conclude this call and enter into the transition of retirement, we give thanks for your ministry. And I'd like to invite you to extend a hand as a sign of blessing as we pray. Hold on. It, it, it looks it's a little a lot bit of too blessing. Hitler-y. Yeah, oh, no, no, we're, okay. just, we're imagining that we have <laughs> our hand on his head and we are praying okay, together, yes. right? Oh, so let's pray. Oh, Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with abilities uh, that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give thanks for the ministry of Pastor Darby among the people of God in this place and in so many places. Oh, God, you watch over our going out and our coming in. So bless this time of transition, this time of ending and beginning. You surround your people in every time and place. Keep us close in your love. You accompany your people in time of joy and times of trial. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Help Pastor Darby and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future you give to us as he has been a blessing to us. So now we send him forth to be a blessing to others through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And I invite you, please, to join in a time of acclamation for his ministry. Thank you. Thanks. Am I supposed to say something now? Oh, um, it's okay. over to you. Hold on, I'm going to do something here. For commentary or for the blessing, or both. Yeah, I, I got nothing. <sighs> I told you last week, it's like, I've told you everything four or five times. Have you listened to me? No. But nonetheless, I, I, I guess I would just say the same thing I said in the kids' message, which is, you know, thank you. It's, it's been a really good year. 
I honestly feel like I'm going out on top. I mean, like, I didn't think we could top six baptisms last week. That was a hoot and holler, wasn't it? But, you know, here the bishop comes and knocks it out of the park. So thank you all for being here, especially some of you who traveled quite far to get here. Um, so uh, with, with, with that, how about, a, how about a blessing? God, who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Amen. And then, uh, oh, yeah, we'll say the dismissal in a little bit. Jesus. Thanks be to God.